PBS Frontline did a documentary called Left Behind America, and I want to show you a small clip from it. Uh, this is this is devastating. St. Vincent de Paul's is one of the dozens of charitable food pantries serving the Dayton area. I got 49, a lot lower than I thought it was going to be. Usually just far down, I'm about 70 or 80. <laughs> Last year, they gave out free groceries more than 31,000 times. for the whole crowd running up Yeah, I, I, you never know what's going here, 49. Number 39, your food is ready. Please meet your shopper at the door, number 39. The majority of people who come to our pantry work. We actually have a significant number that come here, they'll give me a ticket and they'll say, I have to be at work at 10 or I have to be at work at 9.30, please make sure I get my food. People who are coming are people who will probably never recover from the Great Recession. We have families watering down soup and moms trying to figure out how to make a box of mac and cheese last for two days. Are you tired? You're being really good. We visit homes with no food in the cupboard at all. There is nothing. Number 46, your food is ready. Please meet your shopper at the door. I cannot overstate the change that happened in 2008 and from there on. It was a game changer for us. Um, people who have never needed help came to us and they continue to and we still see the the impact from that event jobs have come back but it's not the kind of jobs we lost people who are making a good middle class income are now making 10 or 12 dollars an hour people lost half of their pension people did everything they were supposed to do and it didn't work you're bagging up here today yes ma'am okay you can head this way okay. yeah. all i've seen is the need increase increase and increase I mean, we used to serve 150 families. We're now serving 350 and up. All I see is the need going up and up and up. Your food is ready. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Hold on. A lot of the jobs here in Dayton are minimum wage, no benefits. So by the time they provide all of that to their family, groceries are the last on the list, and so they need to come here. Yeah. Look, they have cupcakes right here. Look at that. I don't like to see kids coming here with their parents. It just, it really bothers me. It bothers me to see children here because I know they'll be here 20 years from now with their kids. 336, your food is ready. Please get your shopper at the door. It's upsetting knowing that that can be fixed and we're not fixing it. I mean, you heard them. They said it. Most of those people work full time and they still can't afford basic necessities. How that's not the biggest story in America talked about nonstop on cable news is maddening. Because in a world that made sense with a functioning uh, news media, they would talk about that endlessly to shine a light on this giant problem. But they don't do it because corporate media is disconnected from the people and they paint a picture of the world that's reflective of uh, the elite class and what the elite class thinks. It's not reflective of the interests of working people. And in fact, we just covered the poll. I think it was a Gallup poll or a Pew poll. Only 40% of Americans say the media um, understands people like me. So the overwhelming majority say, the media doesn't understand people like me. This can be fixed. It's a political choice not to fix it. It's a choice not to fix this. So what would we do to fix this? Well, I mean, first of all, living wage. That's one thing, and it is incredibly important. <laughs> a living wage. Also, a union. If people had a living wage and a union, there's no way you'd work full time and not make enough money to make ends meet. The union fights on your behalf. Having a living wage law that would be designed to protect you so that your labor is worth a certain amount of money on the marketplace by law. I mean, that's incredibly important. The other thing is universal basic income. You know, I, you guys know I used to have mixed feelings on it. I've come around. I no longer have mixed feelings on it. Uh, and the simple reason is it is economically feasible. I wasn't sure it was. I'm now convinced it is economically feasible. And also, 
And there's another way of framing UBI. Very simple. Social security for all. That's what it is. So we're having a conversation about Medicare for all. And by the way, that would save money over our current healthcare system. But we're talking about social security for all. That's what UBI is. And I think that's a wonderful idea. Uh, another thing is you watch this clip. Uh, my takeaway is, oh, this country is ripe for a new New Deal. I mean, stop and think about it. We have an infrastructure that gets a grade of D+, plus, according to the Society of Civil Engineers, and they do a report every few years. A D+. Plus. I think we should work to not only make that D+, plus an A or an A+, plus, I think we should have the best infrastructure the world has ever seen. I think we should try to surpass every other country. So what do you do? You do a new New Deal. You employ all these people. Get them, you know, uh, well-paying jobs in the process. So everybody gets employed. And you fix the country in the process. All of this can happen. All of this can take place. But no, we're not doing it. And as you... So you just saw the clip. All those people... A lot of those people work full-time... And they still need to go get food. They can't afford it. Meanwhile, we live in a country where Jeff Bezos has over $100 billion. Bill Gates has like $93 billion. Mark Zuckerberg has like $75 billion or something like that. I mean, that should be obscene to people. One family, the Walton family, which is, I think, what, four people, six people, whatever it is, they have more wealth than like 45% of Americans combined. I mean, that is insanity. We have to have a system that makes sense. The system we have right now does not make sense. And these people have never recovered from the recession. But instead we have, you know, a disconnected government with people like Trump in control where he brags about like, oh, the economy's tremendous. Go tell that to these people who work full time and they still don't make enough money to afford food. What a heartbreaking story. It's a shame it's not talked about more. If it was talked about more, maybe we could put enough pressure on our government to actually do something to address this and to fix it.